Howdy folks, welcome back. So now we have it set up to where we can equip weapons and shields, but we don't have any way of actually, you know, actually equipping it. So let's set all that up, get her to actually draw the sword. So to do that, we are going to need some extra animations. Now, I will leave a link to this, uh, this page if you need the animation pack. I have them all packaged up right here, or you can use whatever character you're using. Uh, but I have some packed up for you if you need it. So when you unzip it, just open it up, and in the combat folder, we're just going to grab all of this. And make sure I take it to the right place inside. So I'm going to import these directly into the animations folder inside the player blueprint. Make sure you apply the right skeleton. So for this one, it's Akai or whatever, however you say that one. And it's going to take just a little bit. Alright, finally done. So with all those done, let's go ahead and save real quick. Now we need to set up another blend space for our uh, melee armed mode. So I'm going to right click where I have my other animation blend spaces and under animation I'm going to create a blend space, not the 1D this time. We want to be able to tell it to move on two axes, which is good for this one which this one is good for, rather. So I'm going to select the skeleton that I want to use, and I'm going to call this armed underscore blend space. And I'll double click and open that up. So you'll notice this one's a little bit different than the other one. We have a graph that we can move. We have a bunch of different points on instead of just having the lines across. So what this is good for is we can establish this bottom graph left and right to be the direction on a 360 degree rotation and this will be the speed at which she's moving so for the horizontal axis settings I'm going to set that to dire direction and for the minimum axis value that's negative 180 and for the maximum is 180 so it makes it a full 360 all the way around but that's the way the re engine registers it so negative 180 and 180 so I'm going to close that one back up, and for the vertical axis, which is the up and down one, I'm going to set that to speed. And my character's max run speed is 450, but you can set yours to whatever you know yours is. And then we'll just go through and apply all the animations in the appropriate spots. So I need to find my sword and shield idle first. Drag it all the way out, or drag it out and uh, all the way across the bottom. So that no matter which direction you stop, she'll just be... Once you stop, she's in that idle. Alright, uh, they are not labeled very well, and for that I apologize. Uh, let's see. Which way are you running? That's backwards. Alright, so run 5, if you're using this pack, is the run backwards. Which means run 6 would be running forward. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the way you can preview or shift this little cursor icon is holding shift on the keyboard and moving your mouse. And that's how it blends between each one. That's the slash. That's a strafe. That looks like a running strafe, yeah. So, sword and shield strafe 6 is running left. I guess 7 is going to be running right no walking left all right so seven is walking left six is running left which means eight should be walking right eh. 
It's just kind of play around with them. You'll figure it out. There we go. I'm going to drop this one in the middle because it's going to be walk backwards. Hey, walk forward. All right. So that one, and then walk one is walk backwards. All right, cool. Yeah, that part's a little bit confusing, so for that I apologize. Uh, I'm going to drop these down to the first one, though, so that she's walking a little bit sooner. It's 110, that looks like enough. So I'm going to drop these to the first row, and then these to the third row. One, two, three, yeah. So just like that. Let's set this right here, and I'll save real quick. Now we need to update our player animation blueprint. Actually, before we get into that, we need to open up the project settings under edit project settings because we need to add an input button for you know trying to draw a weapon. So I'm going to go into the input action mappings. I'm going to add one called draw sword and I'm gonna set it to Q you can use whatever button you like and now I'm gonna go into the player blueprint and in the event graph I'm gonna close some of these so that it just cleans up there we go so I'm gonna find some space and I'm gonna call that action event for the draw sword What we want to do is we want to add a couple variables because we want we only want them to be able to draw a sword if certain conditions are met. So if they're in the middle of drawing a sword, we don't want them to be able to push the button again and mess with the animations. Or if they've already got a sword drawn, then we want them to put it away. So we're going to add two booleans real quick. First one is going to be called changing equip equipment question mark. And I'm going to hook this to a branch with the B left click. Oops. And hook it just like that. And then off the false, because we don't want them doing anything if they're currently in the middle of changing equipment, we're going to hook up one more. What the hell? Oh. Make sure you click that plus. All right. We want to find out if they've already drawn a sword, so sword drawn question mark so we'll add a branch again hook this to the false hook that up like that and then if they have not drawn a sword then we want to set that they are drawing a sword and if they have then we'll just set it back to false now the meat of all of this is going to be handled inside the animation blueprint but we do need to do a couple more things so we're gonna drive out the character movement because the way we're gonna set up the combat is when the sword is drawn out they're gonna face the same direction even if they if they move left they're still gonna be facing forward so the way we can do that is grabbing our character movement component and we want to set orient rotation to movement so this is what affects the mesh and uh, well, it actually affects the capsule component, but since the mesh is parented to that, it'll uh, it rotates the capsule component based on the direction you're moving. So if we disable that, then the capsule component stays facing the same direction, and the mesh does also. Then we want to set use controller desired rotation. So what this does is it basically picks up on what the mouse is doing. So like if I had to move the mouse left, then the capsule rotates left, etc. So I'm gonna straighten that up a little bit. Now we want that it this way when the sword is drawn. So are they holding a weapon? Then we want them to be facing forward and reacting to where the mouse turns. But when they are not holding a weapon, we'll copy that real quick. Hook it all up like that. Drag that down just a little bit. 
and then we want to reverse it back to its normal. So we'll, we'll set it to orient rotation to movement so that when they run, she's always running the right way, and then ignoring the mouse for the turn. All right, so now we can go into the player NMBP, and in the event graph, on our sequence node, we want to add a pin so that we can register another variable. We're going to copy our cast to player blueprint and paste it right next to it so that we can hook it up easier. And then we'll drag it down into place. So we want to grab, grab out that draw sword, that sword drawn variable. We will promote it to a variable called equip melee compile that so that we can go into our state machine and the way we're gonna do this is there's gonna be a draw sword animation then a melee armed animation state and then a sheathing weapon and then back to base so drag off the base and I'm gonna call this draw sword then we'll go up from here, and this will be armed. Drag off, sheath, weapon, and then back to base. So the reason we're doing it like this is because there's going to be an animation that plays to draw the sword out. Then we have that armed animation blend space that we set up. Then there's going to be an animation that puts the sword away and then our base run animations. So in order to get from here to here we want to find out this is the transition rule. This is what tells it okay you can go from this animation state to this animation state to this animation state etc. So I'm going to double click and open that up because what I want to check is to see if she's equipping her melee weapon. Then we'll open up the draw sword animation state and since we want since we want her to be able to draw her weapon on the go we don't want to just grab out this where is it withdrawing sword animation because if I open that up and play it you'll see she's not moving at all we want to blend this animation with her movement animation so the way we can do that is I'm gonna drag this back a little ways and I'm going to drag off of it and do a layered blend per bone. We want to hook this to the blend pose. We don't want it as the base pose. The base pose is going to be our armed, our blend space. That way, because the base pose is basically like the bottom half, this is the top half. So it's taking our base pose and blending this on top of it. Now we want to grab out our direction variable and speed variable that we set up way earlier in the series. And you can hook this just directly to here, but let me show you what it's going to look like if you do. So she's... That was kind of funky. Let's see. Oh. With that selected, make sure it's not looping. Let's go ahead and set up all the transition rules for the rest of them. So I'm going to open up the transition rule from draw sword to armed. And I'm going to type in ratio. Now we want to check the ratio, the time remaining of the withdrawing sword animation. Because once it's finished, then we want to transition to the next animation state. So this finds out how much time is remaining in the animation and then we can just variable there. So I'm going to drag off and see if it's less than or equal to 0 0.01. And if it is, then we'll transition to the next state. The next state in the armed, I'm just going to drag out our armed blend space and hook it just like that. Now from the armed to the sheath weapon, we want to grab out our equip melee and find out if it is not true. So if it's not, and we'll hook that right there. Now in the sheath weapon, we're gonna do the same thing, 
with the layered blend. I'm going to grab out my sheathing sword. But for the blend space, I'm going to use the base locomotion so that she goes back to kind of running normal. Drag off, and we're going to do a layered blend per bone. Hooking the sheath sword to the blend pose, and then making sure that that is set to not loop. So compile real quick. Oh, we got one more. And then from, from the sheath weapon to the base, just like we went from here to here, we want to find the ratio of that sheathing sword animation. So type ratio, get the time remaining, time remaining ratio, find out if it's less than or equal to 0 0.01, and we'll hook that up just like that. All right, now we should be able to, I should be able to demonstrate. Um, so if I try to do it right now, it looks like I got those animations backwards also. She didn't even draw the sword at all. Why is she not drawing the sword? Let's see, sword drawn. Oh, because we didn't set up the layered blend. So it's just snapping through it. <laughs> okay, Alright, in the player and a blueprint where we're drawing the sword with drawing the sword, highlight this layered blend per bone. So we gotta tell it which bone to blend through. Makes sense, right? So under the layer setup, we'll drop these arrows down until you get to the array elements and you'll add one. And then you'll open it up and then right here you'll see the bone name and the blend depth. Now the bone name is going to come directly from the skeleton. So if I open up the skeleton, you can kind of see where all the bones are at. I'm going to be used blending it across the spine. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to type spine. Now you want to make sure it's typed exactly the way it is in the other one. So now with that set up, now it should be able to actually play it. So let me show you what happens and how funky it's going to look for a second if you... So you see now she's kind of wonky looking. Let me, let me fix that damn blend space real quick. So I'm going to open up that armed blend space and i got to swap these over. So I'm going to take everything that was on the left and replace it with the ones that was on the right. I swear, every time I set one of these up, I always get them backwards the first time. So now she's running kind of funky, but she's doing it right. But the animation just looks weird. <laughs> so the way we can fix that animation is with this selected. This is the part I was trying to show you, but I got way too ahead of myself. So you'll find some... Uh, we want to set the blend depth to 5. So this works on a 0 through 10. Basically, 0 is it's doing just the base pose, and 10 it's doing just the blend pose. So if I set it to 5, it's right halfway in between. But that's not enough to get us the smooth animation that we want. We also need to check some boxes. So the mesh space rotation, it'll blend the bones according to the actual mesh. So we want to check that one, and then the scale also underneath, which basically scales it accordingly also. Now the curve blend option, we don't want to override, we want to normalize by weight. This, to be honest, I'm not really sure exactly what that means, but it, it, it fixes it, <laughs> makes it look good. So now let me show you. It looks a lot better now. So instead of setting that all up through the other one too, let me just control C, and we'll take this to the sheath weapon. We'll delete that one and just replace it with the one we've already updated. So now, what in the world? Did I not, I didn't hook the speed up. Dummy. So yeah, now she's able to run around, pull her wep or imaginary weapon out, and sheath it, and it looks, you know, semi-decent. So now when she's doing that, we want to actually equip the weapon. So the way we're going to do this is inside the player skeleton here.
on the skeleton itself. So remember to get to this, you just open the Anim BP and then this this new little icon thing will open your skeleton. So over in the preview scene settings for the animation, I'm going to set to use a specific animation. And I want her to be doing the sword and shield idle. Because we got to line up where everything's going to spawn real quick. So the way we do this is we're going to add some sockets to the bones. So her sword is going to be in the right hand. So I'm going to find the right hand bone. And I'm going to right click and then right here you can see add socket so it'll say right hand socket but hold with it highlighted I'm gonna hit F2 and call this weapon slot now this is just basically a socket it's just like it sounds like just something you can socket an item into or a transform that you can apply or that you can reference so I am going to right click and add a preview asset let's see and I want to use one of these uh, skeletal meshes that we're using for our swords. So I'm going to highlight or select that one. And then you'll just basically drag it into position to where it looks good. So I'm going to drag it down towards the hand. Kind of make it to where it's in her hand. Make it look a little bit, wait, what is it, oh. Okay, so I'm gonna disable the snapping to the rotation grid. So this is snapping to the, uh, the, the dragging, this one, the location grid. This one is the rotation, and then this is the scale. So, remember, you don't wanna select the weapon and try to drag it around, because it'll, you'll probably click the hand and then you'll be dragging around and then it looks like that. So you want to make sure you're highlighting the weapon slot and then dragging it around. So I'm just gonna drag it into place. Kinda rotate it to give it the weight that it's supposed to have. and then rotate the blade itself so that it's uh, facing the right direction for our attack. So uh, a good way of knowing which direction to face the blade is basically according to these knuckles. If you've ever held like a machete or a sword or anything, the blade generally lines up around that area. But another way you can check is changing the specified animation. So just picking one of the slashes, one of the slash attacks Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's see, is this their main attack? Yeah. So I'm just going to move it forward across the line. And then that's looking decent. Let me make sure it's still all lined up in her hand just right. That's looking... You know, not, not, not bad. That's good. So now when she swings the weapon, it'll look a little bit funky. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now in the player blueprint, where we're drawing the sword, we also want to back this up because we want to check one more thing. If the character does not have a sword currently equipped, we don't want them to be able to try to draw nothing. So we're going to grab out our sword info, get it, and break it open. So we're going to drag off the item class and ask, is this a valid class? And then we'll add a branch. I know there's lots of branches for this, but you're, you Oh, pff, no, not the false. You want to hook the true to it. But checks and balances. Just to make sure everything works appropriately. 
So now, if they have a weapon equipped, then they'll run through the rest of it. So now if I hop in, now I can't do nothing, but as soon as I pick up that sword and equip it, now I can. But unfortunately, it is not spawning just yet. So in the player blueprint, we want to add a function called spawn gear. And then we will grab out our sword info. And we're going to break it open. And from the spawn gear, we want to spawn actor from class. The class we want to spawn is our weapon class. And the transform, we will get that by dragging out the mesh so that we can get a reference to its skeleton, which is automatically in there. And we want to get socket transform. Now the socket is the one that we just set up, and in the in socket name, that's where we're going to apply. So you want to make sure it's spelled exactly as it is inside your socket. So I have it set as weapon slot, W is capitalized, S is capitalized. So that is the way it's going to be right here. Now for the transform space, I'm going to set it to relative to scale actor. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what RTS stands for, but it's, uh, you want to make sure it's on actor. And then we will set that right there. Now from the return value where we spawn the sword, we want to promote this to a variable called sword reference. And then we want to attach it to our mesh. So we're going to attach the actor to a component. So drag off and attach actor to component. The parent that we want to attach it to is the mesh that we just spawned it on. The socket name is, just like last time, weapon slot. And what this does is, just like it says, it's going to make sure that it stays exactly at that location. So we're going to, for the location, on these three drop downs, you'll click it and snap to target on all three. So now, all right, let me pick it up. So now when I equip that sword, it does nothing because I forgot to call the actual function. <laughs> uh, we'll get there, we'll get there, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the way we can get it is we need to open up that animation where she's withdrawing her sword. You'll notice it's already here, but it, that doesn't matter. That's just because it's a preview. So you're going to go to the point in the animation to where she would be drawing the sword out. So this is about where I want it to spawn at, right as she's just about to pull it. So I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to right click. Right here you'll see there's a notifies track. On this one, I'm going to right click, and I want to add a notify. A notify is just basically an event that is triggered from the animation that you can run events at that time. So I'm going to add a new notify. What is it? I don't have any. I'm going to add a new notify called spawn gear. So now in the player anim blueprint, we'll go into the event graph. And the reason we set up this player reference variable when we first started establishing everything is so that we can run uh, events directly from here without having to cast every single time. So I'm going to drag out and get my player reference, and then I'm going to get that anim notify that we just set up. So it was spawn gear, and you'll see this event anim notify spawn gear. Now from here, I want to drag off and type spawn gear so that it calls that function from inside the blueprint. Oh, pff, I keep trying to do it without equipping a weapon first. Now you notice she kind of lurched a little bit, but that's just because we haven't set up the, uh, we, we gotta alter the collisions of the weapon. But, so that's doing like it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and, um, do that real quick. So I'm gonna go into my weapons, and then I'm gonna open it up. 
and for the item I'm going to change it from block all dynamic to no collision. I'm going to do that for the other sword too because when we create new weapons I'm just going to duplicate these and alter some things so it'll automatically adjust. So I'm going to change it to no collision. So now when I go in stupid can't change it to no collision because then it won't even register the, the thing. So we don't want no collision, we want overlap. Overlap all. Now let's try it. There we go. So now she's running, it's not messing with the camera or her movement. But if we try to put it away, it just stays in the hand. So let's fix that now. So we're going to create another function called destroy gear. And from here we're going to grab that sword reference and just as a safety precaution we're going to say is valid. So is it valid currently and if it is then we'll destroy the actor. Now just like we set up in that first animation, the withdrawing sword, we need to go into the sheathing sword and set up another animify. So I'm going to take it to the point to where the weapon would be destroyed. I'll say right about here and add a new notify called destroy gear. Now in the player anim BP in the event graph we will call our destroy gear notify and then from the player reference our destroy gear function. So we'll check that out real quick. That might be a little bit too quick. The best thing about notifies is like if you set it up and you don't like where it's at, where it's happening. Let's see, I'm going to move it to here. You can just kind of adjust it on the timeline, and now that entire event is fired off when you want it, instead of having to go through and try to mess with delays and all that stuff. So let me equip my sword, and then there's that. I might need to move that socket a little bit, but yeah, she's equipping her sword and putting it away. So I, I am just going to drag this up just a little bit. That's a little low. So about there. That looks good. Oh, right. So let's take a look. Just a little look-see. That looks a little bit better. Alright, but now she's not spawning her shield. So even if you equipped one, she wouldn't spawn that right now. So let's set that up also. So in the spawn gear, after we spawn the sword, we want to grab out our shield info, get it, break it open, and we want to find out if they even have one equipped. So we'll say is valid. We'll add a branch right at the end of the attach actor to component. And we're going to hook that up right there. And if it is, then we're going to spawn it. But first, just like last time, we need to set up a place for it to spawn. So in the skeleton, I'm going to go find the left hand. Left hand, and then I'm going to add a socket just like last time by right clicking and hitting it in this drop down. And then instead of left hand socket, I'm going to F2 and call it shield slot. I'm going to right click that shield slot socket and add a preview asset that will be that shield mesh. That way we can go ahead and fix it up where we want it, right here. So I'm going to rotate it around. Move it forward. To kind of, oh, that's the wrong one. Just kind of line it up where you want it, where it's going to look right. Now it's not going to look 100% right because there's this thing 
that uh, just doesn't apply to this character, but we'll get it looking decent at least. So, shield would be angled just a little bit. And that's looking decent. So now for the shield actors, we want to go in and do the same thing to its static mesh. Change its collision to overlap all. Do it in that one, and then the other one also. Whoa. For the item, just overlap all. Oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, an easier way to do this would probably just go find the base item and then just change it in there. But I'm dumb. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but either way. Alright, so now that we have our shield set up to spawn, or its spawn point set up, rather, we want to just like last time with the sword, we're going to spawn actor from class. So, is the shield a valid class? And if so, we want to spawn said shield. Now, just like we did over here, we're just going to grab this part and this part. And we will control C and move that over. And remember, you can grab multiple things by box selecting holding control and then box selecting something else and it'll grab all you want and I'm going to control V it over here so I'm going to move this into position hook that up but I'm going to change the socket name because we don't want it to spawn on top of the sword I'm going to change it to the shield slot then when we spawn the actor of the shield we want to promote it to a variable this will be our shield reference. Hook that up, that up, and that up. And then change the socket name to shield slot. Compile that real quick. And that will be all good there. But now when we destroy it, we want to find out if this shield reference is a valid thing also. So we'll drag it out and say is valid question mark and if it is then we want to destroy the actor just for good measure I'm gonna go ahead and hook this is not valid directly to here so that we always check and make sure and then I will go in let me grab a sword let me grab a shield equip them both real quick and then there's our sword and shield all set up and ready to go for our combat. And then when we put it away, it went through her arm a little bit. Let me fix that. Might have to pull it away just a little bit. So pull it away, kind of rotate it to fit in her hand. Like I said, it's not going to be the prettiest, but it'll be functional. And you're learning. Look at you go. Let me equip that real quick. And then when I pull it out. And you can't really tell when she's in combat anyway. Plus we're going to adjust the cameras. So. Yeah, that's looking good. Alright, and the next one we'll start shifting the camera around and getting everything set up for the combo attack system. So, see you later. Bye bye.